Well, from driving classic Ferraris in Italy last week to driving a brand new Rolls Royce in the UK this week, one thing I continue to love about my job is the variety. However, one thing that seems to remain a constant in my job is the rain. Uh, I don't know what's going on in 2024. It feels like every single video I film this year has been in the rain. I'm, I'm a little bit over it, starting to depress me slightly. But anyway, hello one and all, welcome to Seeing Through Glass. And yes, welcome to the, the new-ish Rolls-Royce Spectre. Of course, the headline about this car is it's electric. Rolls-Royce's first all-electric car. But I actually think that might be the least important thing about it. Let's think of the way that we often describe EVs. Heavy, but smooth. They offer instant torque. They're very quiet. These are all things that describe most modern day Rolls Royces. So I don't think it's really going to make a huge difference to my experience. Or the fact that we've got an electric powertrain instead of a combustion engine one. We'll see, because I'm going to be spending around 72 hours with this car. I've got a big old loan with this thing, and I'm going to be living the life, living my life, living the life of a Rolls-Royce owner, and just figuring out what this thing is all about. Because yes, whilst we do have electric power for the first time in a Rolls-Royce, this thing is a proper top dollar car. It sits somewhere in between the new Phantom and the Cullinan. It's much more than a Wraith or a ghost. It starts from around £330,000. But, well, the options quickly add up on Rolls Royces and, and customers don't tend to hold back. So I fully expect there'll be some of these cars specced up to 400, maybe even close to £500,000. It's kind of the spiritual successor to one of my favorite modern era Rolls Royces, the Phantom Coupe. So yeah, it's not an opportunity that comes around every day. It's a very special moment. And I'm super excited to find out what this thing is all about. So, seatbelts on. Let's um, power this thing to life. Hit the uh, start-stop button. Oh, very elegant start-up sound. Oh, I actually want to hear that again. One, two, three. Delightful. Into drive, and off we go. Now, it's been a little while since I last drove a Rolls Royce, and I, I gotta be honest, I've forgotten how special an experience it is. It's really hard to put into words, but I guess if I were to say that certain supercars can give the fizz, well then Rolls Royces give the warmth. It's just such a calming experience. If you're someone that suffers with stress and anxiety, go buy a Rolls Royce. I genuinely think it would help. The minute you get behind the wheel of one of these cars, it's just, it's all so effortless. Driving is so relaxing and easy. Interacting with all the tech and infotainment is just second nature. It's quiet and it's peaceful and yeah, you just immediately chill out. And I have to say, based on initial impressions, I'm really not picking up on the fact that there's a battery power in this vehicle rather than an engine. There are little tiny clues here and there. Some of the power deployment, the regenerative braking, but it's so subtle. Anyway, I'm kick-starting this loan experience by using this car in a way that perhaps not many Rolls Royce owners will use it, going on a, on a bit of a road trip, quite a short road trip, doing about 100 or 150 miles southwest to a stunning hotel called the Newt in Somerset. I say I don't think many Rolls Royce owners will do a similar trip because I feel like most of the time you see ghosts, cullinans, phantoms in and around the city. I guess they're being used for trips out to lunch and dinner, maybe the daily commute to the office in the city, or they're attached to hotels or businesses and they're chauffeur driven. So it's always just for short journeys. Another reason why the fact that this is an EV, well, won't really change how Rolls Royce customers will use it, because they're not gonna have range anxiety, they're just not going far enough. When I picked up this car at about 85 or 90% charge, it was giving me an estimated range of 240 miles. I just don't think many Rolls Royce owners are going more than 240 miles in one journey at any time. They're obviously gonna be able to charge at home because while well, their homes will be country estates or mansions, they'll probably have superchargers installed because why not? They can afford to do so. So yeah, it's just there's no usual cliched EV hassle with this thing. 
because customers will be rich enough to get around that. If they do want to go further, they'll just take the private jet. Um, I'm doing the journey because it gives me a chance to test out the car in different situations and just to get used to it. You know, a long distance trip allows you just to figure out the car before I then I head back into the city to use it for the next few days. So yeah, here we are in cruise control, effortlessly just wafting along. We've got a lunch stop about 20 minutes away, then we'll have another hour's journey after that. What a delight! Well, this is Hungerford, and it's my lunch stop for the day because it's kind of a halfway point between where I started and where I'm headed. It has made me realize, well, the first potential negative about the Spectre is the fact that it's absolutely massive. <laughs> like, and that's an understatement. So whilst this is a two plus two coupe, it's wider and it's longer than the Wraith, a proper four door saloon car. It's only a tiny bit narrower than a Cullinan, making it one of the biggest cars on sale in Europe. It's much bigger than a big Range Rover, for example. <laughs> the thing is huge. So it's not just the sort of commercial positioning of this in between Cullinan and Phantom. I mean, it's just size-wise somewhere in that realm. It means parking. Hmm, interesting. I've actually been driving around for about 20 minutes trying to find a space that I could fit in. So I saw this one pop up and I was like, yeah, there we go. I can just swing in. But let me just uh, get the parking cameras on to make sure. Yeah, there we go. I'm not hanging too far out the back. Edge forward a little bit. I say but because these are the biggest doors ever fitted to a Rolls Royce. So you might get into a space. Actually, then climbing out of the car is a whole other battle. So let's see if I've left enough space from this discovery. Push carefully. Oh, I think I can squeeze out of there. <gasps> now, by doing a road trip, I'm also able to test the practicality of the Spectre, including luggage space, which I have to say, is pretty good, which is no great surprise given the size of this thing, but still, I'm impressed because a lot of EVs, well, have reduced boots or luggage spaces. There's a separate compartment down here for the charging cables. We'll be using those later. Uh, I'm only doing one night away, so I've just got my trusty little weekend bag with me, but I do do much longer trips quite often. And recently, Carl Friedrich sent me their new trunk. This thing is designed for trips that are like three weeks or longer. It's big but amazingly fits kind of perfectly in the Spectre. Uh, Carl Friedrich asked if they could sponsor this part of the video so I could show this thing off to you. And I was more than happy to do so because I think a lot of you know, I've been using these Carl Friedrich bags for like 18 months or so. And yes, they support the channel, but I'm obsessed with their bags. I pretty much live out of the Carry On X, their Carry On suitcase, which is just dreamy. All of the bags are super well made. They've got lovely leather details. They're very secure. But the best thing for me is they're super lightweight, whether they're empty or full of things. But I can just always maneuver them around and as I say, slot them into the boots of Spectres. Uh, this epic trunk not only is big, but it has these great retractable sections inside, meaning that if you are going away for a long period of time, you can separate clothes for different occasions, different climates. It's also a very good zipped off section in the top here. So you really could load this thing up ready for a big adventure, which is what I'll be doing in the summer when I have a big adventure planned. More on that soon. But yeah, there we go. Lovely new trunk, but I do recommend any of their bags. This is also a Carl Friedrich product. There is a link to their website below. Go and check them out. I highly recommend all of their products. So thanks to them for continuing to support the channel, but also for sending me free bags. Let's continue with our journey. From one of Britain's oldest monuments, Stonehenge to one of their newest, the Spectre. Would you call this a monument? I mean, you could. It's heavy enough, and as we've just, just, just explained, big enough. Um, anyway, earlier I said it's hard to explain exactly what makes driving a Rolls Royce so special, but, but some 80 miles into my journey, I feel like I'm starting to figure out part of what makes driving this Rolls Royce so special. Uh, this car has 577 horsepower and like 900 newton meters of torque. Uh, I've driven plenty of other EVs, some with similar power, some with more, some with less. 
it seems to be no matter how much power or torque they have, they all share the same kind of characteristics, which are, well, an overly sensitive throttle pedal, instant torque, and then sort of aggressive regen braking. Some cars are better than others when it comes to the regenerative braking, but in general, I always feel like it's a bit of an unnatural feeling. Problem is, those are three characteristics that you would never want associated with a Rolls-Royce driving experience. Luckily, they never would be with this car. <laughs> it's as if the team at Goodwood have, have looked at how all of the manufacturers are making EVs and gone, well, that's not very us. Let's just stay in our lane and we'll make a Rolls-Royce that happens to be an EV rather than an EV with a Rolls-Royce badge. I mean, take that regen braking, for example. I'm currently in the more aggressive regen braking setting. It's a, it's a little B, a button, on the gear stalk here behind the steering wheel. But it's anything but aggressive. Like, it's like perfectly judged. Yes, you can do one pedal driving if you want. Just use that accelerator pedal. But, well, it takes a while to get used to that. I've actually been playing with it for the last 30 or 45 minutes and it's quite a good game to see if you can judge when to pull off that throttle pedal to come to a perfect stop at a roundabout or traffic lights. And it really is a perfect stop. There's no like, last minute lurch. You haven't got to suddenly reach for that brake pedal if you've got it right. It's all just there so that it's this unbelievably smooth and refined driving experience, like, like all other Rolls Royces. And it's the same with the, with the accelerator pedal. Car implores you just to drive smoothly and enjoy the journey. That's hard to do if every time you step on the accelerator pedal, you're like, ah, ah. but even now, like I'm pushing fairly hard and it just oh, pulls the road and the car just moves. You do notice that traffic is disappearing behind you. So you are going faster than maybe you anticipate or, 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 or know, but it's never a horrible and unnerving feeling. So bravo. Rolls Royce for just not following the crowd and going, yeah, okay, well, I'm sorry, if you have an EV, these are just the characteristics you have to put up with. No, no, you don't. This is what people need to learn from this. Anyway, as I say, beautiful drive now. The weather has finally turned good. Got some sunshine going past Stonehenge, glorious British countryside. And I've got 30 miles to go. And to update you, 131 miles of range. So we're chilling, people. I've got the massage seats on the sound system which is fantastic blasting and I'm really enjoying life in this spectre. Well, welcome to the Newt in Somerset. This is my destination for day one with the Spectre. I think officially I'm in the farmyard, which is like the Newt's additional property. It's over the road from the main hotel, but apparently it's a little bit more VIP, a little bit more exclusive than the main house, and therefore supposedly a little bit more Rolls Royce appropriate. I haven't stayed here before. I've stayed in the main house and it was spectacular. So I'm sure this place will be mega as well kind of running out of superlatives to uh, sum up or describe my day with the Spectre. It's, it's been pretty fantastic. <laughs> I've always said any Rolls-Royce experience should be better than really any other car you've driven, at least any other luxury car you've driven because of the brand's reputation, the price point, the kind of aspirational level of the cars. Yeah, you should get it and be like, oh, I get it. I understand this is fantastic. And whilst I feel like I've always understood the brand previously, always appreciated the product, there's always been a final five or 10%, which has stopped me from going, one day I wanna own one of these cars. You all know, that's the litmus test for me. If I come away going, I want one, I think it's a really great car. I've never really had that. I've been like, this is great, this is great, but do I want it? The Spectre, oh my God. <laughs> Spent the last hour going, how on earth do I buy one of these cars? It has been near on perfect today. It is big and it does cost £330,000 base price. Yeah, those two slight issues. Anyway, let's not go ahead of ourselves. It's day one, two more full days to go with the car. Plenty of time to find some flaws. Maybe. I'm not sure I will. Uh, tomorrow, I really want to get into the sort of tech, the interior, some other things that I've noticed. But let's call it a day for now. I'm going to put my feet up, maybe even like the fire. 
have a delicious dinner at the main restaurant and then we'll get up nice and early tomorrow and head back out in the spectrum. And if I'm honest, I can't wait. Oh, 12 hours to go. Maybe I'll go look at the spectre again. I'll take some pictures of it or something like that. Well, good morning. Welcome to day two with the Spectre. Uh, yes, it has just started raining. <laughs> the minute I hit record on that camera, the heavens opened. Hmm. Uh, but it's been a great night here at the Newt. I got some good rest. Uh, and the car has been fully recharged. It's just a little seven kilowatt charger here. But yeah, we've got 100% on the battery and an estimated range of 262 miles. Uh, my plan for today is to head back towards London. I'm going to record a podcast episode today. And Tony from Gravelwood, the co-host of my podcast, is really intrigued by this car. Actually, I'd go further than that and say, I think he's interested in getting one of these cars. And that's bizarre because, well, if you listen to the podcast regularly, you'll know Tony hates EVs, like does not like them. But for the last three months or so, ever since we saw one of these cars in Australia at the end of last year, he's just been nagging me like, oh, I think I want a Spectre. So I want to show it off to him and basically try and encourage him to go and get one. Because <laughs> you will now know, I think it's mega. Um, but there's lots of cool little features that I, I, I want to display to him, essentially, because over and above the driving experience, Rolls Royce have implemented some, some new techs and new touches which just improve the ownership or the, or the overall experience. For example, this absolutely massive door, the biggest door ever to be on a Rolls Royce, oh, yes, does continue to open if you hold the inner door handle. And like on so many other Rolls Royces, I can now close it with a button down here because that's too far to reach. But on the Spectre, I can also close it by putting my foot on the brake. It's like, this, like, just as with the driving experience, it's these little things that I never would have thought of that. Like, like the button here felt fine, but someone at Goodwood, at the Rolls-Royce factory, went, this should be even easier. And they put it in that brake pedal, and I'm like, wow, why would I ever push a button down here? That's so boring, that, that's exhausting. It does make the getting in and driving away experience so much easier and smoother. And yeah, it's like they're just thinking for you. And there's lots of other details like that. It's going to be a two and a half hour drive, I think, this morning. It's just gone 8.30, so there's probably going to be some rush hour traffic. So I'm going to get the massage seats on, the podcast going, maybe a little heated steering wheel. We'll crack on with a fairly mundane journey back towards London to go find Tony. Initial impressions? Well, it's purple. <laughs> Do you not think the purple's amazing? Yeah, if it's a Lambo. Mate, I love the purple. And look at the wheels. It's about 85 inches, then. 23 it? inch. Yeah, that's amazing. Biggest wheel. Fitted to a Rolls Royce, and it's a functional grill. It actually aids with cooling of the battery. I, th I think it's one of the first EVs I've come across with like a functional grill. What you think they've like thought about it? Well, no, 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 because usually, usually <laughs> manufacturers go, oh, you know, because it's electric, you don't need a grill. Like, it's not needed. So they always bang on about that. This one actually does cools stuff, the cools the car. Redesigned right. Spirit of Ecstasy aids with aerodynamics. That is not a joke. That is not a joke. It has been reprofiled to aid with the aero of the car. Yeah. They just shaved the nose off. No, 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 no. All the, the wings are slightly higher, it's, it's a bit smoother. I mean, I've drunk the Kool-Aid a bit there, but you, still... You been fully brainwashed. <laughs> <laughs> it's the detail. How huge is it, though? Yeah, I mean, I really like these. Really like those? The main channel people won't know, but the podcast people will know that I really, really like these. I've told the main channel people, do not worry. <laughs> I'm here to convince you to buy one of these things. Shall we get inside? Yeah, come, come. Yeah, let's do it. Put your foot on the brake, sir. You are joking. Put your foot on the brake, sir. Oh yeah. That's good, isn't it? I, what about this one? Yeah, I don't have the option. I've got to, I've got to <laughs> that's all right, I can get over that. Done you in? No, I just fine. Like, well you or you could have controlled it for me. So that I think is big. Like for me that's the not revolutionary prop, but I really like that. Oh I'll have it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but there's more, there's more. Okay. Um so obviously like new uh sort of screens and things. Oh, 
was driving. Oh, down. Spike's car radio is playing. <laughs> hello, <laughs> well, hello, hello, boys. A bit, of, a bit of podcast action whilst I was driving back. Um, yeah, so newer screens and things like that, which has got a bit of the BMW tech and stuff. Well, it is BMW. It is BMW. But, yeah, it, but, yeah. but, but this is what's interesting, right? Uh-huh. So they take the BMW tech and they actually remove quite a lot of it that they think is un Rolls Royce. Things that they think their, their customers or owners wouldn't or maybe shouldn't need. <laughs> okay. So it's actually a reduced BMW program, which I quite like. Um, so there's less options than you would expect, but otherwise it's all very familiar. Oh, yes, yeah, so the heated steering wheel mm-hmm. also heats other elements, touch points in the car. What? what well, so, why don't you just have another button for. No. No? That's, it's not heated steering wheel, it's heated touch points. That's what they say. Well, well that's what I'm oh, saying. You have, you have <laughs> definitely been done. <laughs> Starlight doors. Yep, lovely. Lovely, right? This is all lovely, yeah. All super nice. You know what? Yeah. Actually, I want to get in the back because they said it's quite roomy in the back. What, for. T- well, Sam is six foot. Six foot two. In you go, boy. So you How'd were you asking about why the doors didn't open. You pull once and then you pull again. And you hold up! <laughs> I mean, imagine the kids doing that, just going to fall out. Well, imagine if there's a cyclist coming. <laughs> So they were they were very keen to point out that this is supposedly very comfortable. You now have to close that door, sir. By L. There's a little button in the centre. Yeah. No, on the right hand side. This one? Yeah. Pull it up, there you go. You know what? They weren't wrong. It's nice back here. You're alright? I'm fine. The sound system as well in here is outrageous. What we sound system is it? Uh, it's their special bespoke audio. But what is it? What, what? Well, we'll play it off camera because if I play it on camera, we'll get you get sued. Sued. Well, I won't get sued. Oh no, I? let's play behind the glass. Oh, is that allowed? Then we won't get sued, will yeah, we? Yeah, but, but it won't sound that good. It's not got no bass. No, but wait. Really? You think that? Even a podcast, mate. Hello, one and all, and welcome to Behind the Glass, your weekly automotive podcast hosted by two rather. Mate, I hate this introduction. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, price. <laughs> I hate you when he does this. It starts at three hundred and thirty thousand pounds. Start. Starts. Right. Two. So it's over four hundred grand. Anyway. Well, yeah. <laughs> so Is it really? Rolls Royce wouldn't actually give me the the final price of this particular <laughs> car. Um, I'm estimating around. 410, 420. Oh, I think the bloke that spent this has been sacked. It was actually a lady. Oh, the young lady who spent this. Has she got a job still? She does. No. I spoke to her <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> and she said, well, this is a very bespoke one-on-one press car. So it's hard for us to completely, you know, put a final figure on it. But right. you would, you're not wrong to say around 410, 420. Yeah. It's quite easy to spend over 100 grand's worth of options on one of these cars. But you don't need to. You know who you, don't, you, you do need, need you to. You hate mate. adaptive cruise control. You, you don't need, need that. No, not in this. You you need to, mate. Yeah, you is do. you got to you got to have all of this starlight. And of course, and if you're buying a Rolls Royce, you're not thinking about oh well, I, actually, I don't want to pay for the stitching. Are no, you? It, it, well, if you've got three hundred and thirty grand, you got four hundred. Exactly. Yeah. And mate, I think this would suit you down to a T. It absolutely would suit me down to a T. But then, what am I going to do with it? I, I, th- around it, no, it? mate. This is a car for me a little bit later on in life. No, it's not. I, it's I've not. never had a Rolls Royce, have you? <gasps> okay, well, we'll chat a little bit more in this week's episode, which we're about to go and record about the Rolls Royce experience, driving and and living with the Rolls Royce. So, if you want to hear more of our thoughts on that, and I guess more of our discussions around the Spectre, go and check out the latest episode of Behind the Glass. You can find it on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, over on the YouTube channel. I think now it's time to get out of this <laughs> and go back in the real world go back in the real world <laughs> and you'll join me probably tomorrow for a drive through central london which is where maybe the size of this vehicle is going to start to be a bit of an issue because it, it is a bus <laughs> big old bus <laughs> Well, it's my third and final day with the Spectre and I've lost my voice, probably from filming this car in the wind and the rain over the last few days. But look, I'm not gonna drag this out because no one wants to listen to me talking like this. A few points just to touch on before I finish this video. 
Uh, does this car feel big in the city? Yes, absolutely. But there's something quite reassuring about its size. It's a Rolls Royce. Sitting here, I just feel wealthy. I feel successful. This car gets so much attention. And usually I hate that. When I'm driving around London in a supercar, I'm like, oh, it's a bit embarrassing. But this, I'm like, yes, I'm in a Rolls Royce. It's just kind of brilliant. So the fact it's huge, you just figure it out. How often would I have to parallel park this car? Probably not very often because I'd be rocking up at my apartment block like that and just dumping the car wherever I like. It's a Rolls Royce. The driving characteristics, which I touched on a few days ago, come into their own here in the city. The regen braking, perfectly timed and assisted and weighted. The throttle pedal, again, just helps you be so smooth and in the city, that's what you want to be. And then the silence. The silence of an EV fits this car perfectly. I'm whispering to protect my voice and I'm sure you can still hear me perfectly. So look, any any car, but any daily driver, any luxury car that I experience after this will be a step down, will be a step backwards. In the past, I've previously, well, got a bit frustrated with some of the touch points in a Rolls Royce, some of the buttons, some of the knobs feeling a bit cheap relative to the overall price of the car. But in here, somehow it works it's like a juxtaposition, the brand new tech of an EV and these screens, along with these super analog buttons. It feels like this stuff won't age, it won't date. You'll get in this car and it will all just always work and make sense. So it's a big win. This thing immediately goes into my lottery ultimate car garage list, which no previous Rolls Royce has done. So that's gotta be a major win, but take it for what you will. And let's wrap things up because I'm <laughs> running out of vocal cords. And as I say, I'm sure you've been frustrated listening to me talk like this. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. I've loved the Spectre. Give it a thumbs up if you have. Stay subscribed because I've got some big adventures up ahead.